Hello and welcome back. So this is kind of like a uh, this is a like a mini tutorial going into a concept that I introduced in my very first video, and uh, this is basically a more in depth version of how to make train tracks uh, with a cheating method. I mean, realistically, if you want to make train tracks, you could just add in a cube, make it real small, stretch it out then just duplicate it along a bunch of times and then duplicate another one, turn it 90 degrees, uh, just raise it up a little bit, scrunch it in, um, then like put it over here, make another one over here, and then you could add in more details necessary. And that works and that's cool. But uh, this is a quick way to get train tracks packaged into one deal. So what I have here is with the images as planes add-on enabled, I've uh, imported an image of, as a plane and it's just of some train tracks. And this isn't really to scale, so you're gonna wanna fix that yourself. And you can just look up online, like how wide are train tracks? And then you can use like the measure tool to just measure out. Anyways, um, basically though, how I usually make it in this method, or as I showed before, is I tab into edit mode I select the loop cut over here, and this allows you to add loops and slide them to as needed. So I'm gonna add some to just outline the tracks, or the rails, and then I'm going to add more and use them to outline, uh, you know, use them to outline the railroad ties. So this is where the process gets a little bit more time consuming. Generally, I'd skip through a lot here, but since I figured this is a quick video, uh, I'm not gonna do that. So instead, I'm just gonna do a section here and not do the whole thing, um, and you could continue as needed. So basically, once you have the ties, then you can add in uh, loop cuts for the end of the ties, like that. And if you really wanna get into it, uh, you can go to the vertex, or vertice C, Vertex, vertex selector up here, select uh, any vertex that you want. And then you can double click G and that allows you to slide it only on one axis. So I do that a lot if I want to really just make sure that this lines up with the tie. I'm not gonna do it for all of these cause uh, you can do it on your own. You don't need me to go through every one, but that's how I do it. Then um, I'm going to switch from the vertice selector to the uh, face select up here. So that way I can come through and I'm gonna press C to circle select. And I'm just gonna select everything that I don't want. And uh, if you accidentally select something that you do want, don't worry, uh, well, with the C or circle select enabled, you can, um, click with the middle mouse button, and that will deselect uh, any faces that you don't want selected. Now I'm gonna press X and then uh, press faces here. So we delete all the unwanted faces. And now we have some tracks that are laid out. I'm going to select everything by pressing A. I'm gonna press Alt E and extrude this up along normals like this. And then I'm going to uh, select just these track tops here. And I'm going to press I to inset the, well, no, no, don't, don't listen to me. I'm going to uh, extrude them up a little bit. I'm going to scale them in on X. But if you try and do that, you'll realize it doesn't work. So I'm going to change the uh, transform pivot point here to individual origins. So we can press SX and scale them separately. Um, I'm going to bring them in a little bit more. Alt E extrude long normals again. Alt E extrude long normals the third time. SX, and I'm gonna drag this out just a little bit, maybe back down a tiny bit. And then one more time for good measure and good health. Here, bring it up like that. And then you can select these edges uh, and do Control B to give them a little bevel. 
like that. And you can add in more detail if you want to give them nice rounded quality. And uh, you'll probably also want to select all these edges here too. Um, Honestly, you'll probably want to just select the whole railroad tie. So just go through and do that. And then you can give those a bevel as well, control B, just to make sure it looks a bit, a bit smoother. I'll just call this tracks. Perfect, nailed it. Um, yeah, and that's basically how I do it. At that point, if you want to do some like uh, texture work, um, you can go back into rendered view and, uh, this is looking a little see-through, I think, cause the alpha is plugged in. So you can just unplug the alpha here and that looks better already. I am going to plug this color into the specular and I'm going to add in a color ramp and oh, wrong one. And, uh, I'm going to control shift click on this so that I can see where the darkest points are and where the lightest points are. And if you watched me before, you'll know that lighter points when plugged into a specular are gonna have more light bouncing off of them and darker points are just going to take the light and do nothing with it, basically. So um, I think probably mostly darker would be good for something like this. Try and get it so the tracks are the darkest uh, and the rails, you know, are a little bit lighter. And I'm going to do a similar thing for the roughness, except in this case, black means that it's no roughness. So that means it's going to be really, really reflective. And white means it's going to be very uh, rough and not reflective. So I'm going to want to switch these because I want the rails to be a bit more uh, reflective and everything else to be not reflective at all, basically. So... Uh, something like that looks all right um and if you want to add a tiny bit more detail into this you can plug this color into the normal and i usually take out a bump map or bump node and i'm going to plug uh this color value into the height of that and you'll see you're getting this insane distortion because this image is not high res but that's okay because i'm just going to turn this way down I just want enough so that it's uh, the texture is a little bit disrupted and it doesn't look completely smooth. Yeah, and that's basically how I do it. Um, at that point, you know, you can add in array modifiers and make your tracks as long as you want. But yeah, that that is how I do it, and I hope that's helpful.